What's up my fellow developers and my non-developers and those who just watch these videos hoping that I crack a joke or two. It's your boy Michael and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you my long-awaited Next.js starter kit and I'm also going to be helping you set it up and then I'm going to talk about how it works and how you can build on top of it. Now in this video that's what I'm going to talk about and in future videos I'll probably build a project using this. Now to preface this is the starter kit that I use whenever I'm hired by a freelance client whenever um, I'm recommending someone a starter kit or if I'm building my own side projects but I do want to note that when using the starter kit you have to understand that this is MIT license meaning if something breaks you can't sue me all right like you you, you know you get what I'm trying to say that being said let's get started so you're gonna go to the site starter.rossmike.xyz or you can get, just go to my github or you can click on the github icon on the site and then what you're gonna do is gonna click code and then download zip and then a zip file should download. So I'm going to click on that. All right, I get the folder here. I'm going to name this YouTube setup. All right, and then I'm going to open my trusted cursor, drag this folder, this folder in cursor. I'm going to full screen this. I'm going to command plus so you guys can see. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, I'm going to toggle panel so I can have a terminal open. And I'm going to use yarn as my package manager. So I'm going to do, I'm going to enter yarn, let all the packages download. I'm going to give it a second. Now, while, while the packages are downloading, there's a couple things that we're going to need. You're going to need a clerk account. So go to clerk.com. The link will be in the description. Set up an account and meet me at this page. You're going to need a Superbase account. Again, create a Superbase account. Link will be in the description. Meet me at this page. Uh, you can create an organization and just meet me here. And then last but not least is Stripe. Create a Stripe account. It doesn't have to be um, like you don't have to. I don't I don't think you have to go through the full process to get access to test mode. We're going to be using test mode because we don't want to spend actual money testing our application. So Stripe, Superbase and Clerk. Make sure those are set up. All the links will be in the description down below. Now that all the packages have downloaded, I'm going to do yarn dev and we're going to go to our browser and do localhost. What the heck? I can't type today. Localhost 3000. And let's see what we get. We see a couple things break. And the reason being is I haven't set up my environment variables. If you click here where it says dot env dot template, you have there is a template here of environment variables that you need to have access to. Right. So in order for me to access clerk and to use clerk for my authentication, I need some keys in order for me to use Superbase as my database. I need some keys in order for me to use use Upstash for a rate limiting. You don't have to have that, but I'm still going to show you how to set that up. You need your Upstash keys. And in order to use Stripe, you need Stripe keys. So I'm going to show you how to set these all up. So we're going to start with clerk first. Right. Again, I hope you met you met me at this page. We're going to call this YouTube demo. All I'm going to need is email and Google. So we're going to click create application. Perfect. My application has been created. I don't have to install this package because this package is already installed. The moment I hit yarn on my starter kit, my starter kit has Clark installed. But you see these keys right here. I'm going to copy this. So this is what I need. So I'm going to copy this here. Click copy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let me move myself here. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to do dot env dot local. All right. And then I'm going to paste my keys here. So step one for clerk is done. So I see that I have these two keys already, but then I see clerk webhook secret and then a bunch of uh, clerk sign in clerk sign up and clerk after sign in after sign up. So I'm just going to copy this right here and paste this. Now, the reason why we need a webhook, uh, I'll explain that in a second. We need to be able to track when someone has signed in, right? So we'll need a webhook for that. And these essentially are when someone signs in, what's the route? The route for me is sign in and sign up. And after they sign in, where do you want to go? I just want them to go to the home page. All right. So that's what these are. You can copy this. But for clerk, we're going to need to set up a webhook secret. Now, I'm going to explain to you um, how webhooks work. So the way I would set up a webhook is I'd go to configure, I go to webhooks, right? And then something should pop up here. Now I need to add an endpoint. So uh, just to give you guys a quick explanation, the way a webhook works, let's say, so let's say this is my website. Okay. 
and let's say a user comes to my website, but not only comes to my website, he signs in, right? So let me just say signs in. Now I'm using under the hood clerk, right? Let's use a different background color to is how do I? Yeah, okay, so I'm using clerk under the hood. So what happens is when someone signs in on my site, I'm using clerk as an authentication layer. I'll actually make clerk separate here. So what happens is technically the user is actually going to clerk. So this sign in right here, even though the person was on my site, they technically go on my site and then clerk handles authentication. So we're going to say handles auth and then clerk is going to authenticate that person, but they're going to send the information back to me, right? And in order for me to receive the information, I need to give them an endpoint that they can hit, right? And the endpoint that they're going to hit is this specific file right here. So I'm going to show you guys real quick. When you go to app, you see an API folder, API slash auth slash webhook. So this is the endpoint that they're going to hit in order for me to track the information of someone signing up. Now, again, I know for my non techies, this is going to be a little difficult, but like catch the words that I'm saying, do your Googles, because it's very hard for me to explain all these concepts in one video. That being said, for my devs, this makes sense to you guys. I need to uh, I need to track the information when someone signed up, signs in, creates an account with clerk. Now, in order for me to create um, a webhook, I need to give them an endpoint. But in order for me to give them an endpoint, the endpoint needs to be the URL needs to be accessible to the Internet. I can't just give them localhost, right? My localhost uh, right here. I can't copy localhost slash API slash I believe it's auth slash webhook. I can't do that because this uh, URL is local to my machine, right? I need a URL that's accessible, um, that, that can be accessed through the internet. And this is where ngrok comes to play. So what you're going to do is you're going to sign up for ngrok. You're going to follow the installation process. It's very, very simple. And then what you're going to do is you're going to open a terminal. So I'm opening a terminal right now. And all you're going to type is ngrok, then HTTP the port you're using. I'm using localhost 3000. So I'm going to do localhost 3000. And what this does, what ngrok does is it exposes my localhost 3000 to the internet. So now if I click this URL, if I go to this URL and I hit visit site, you're going to see, look, I could see my starter kit, which is fantastic. I'm still getting some errors, but that's because we have some stuff to set up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to clerk. I'm going to copy the URL, and then I'm going to find the path. So I'm at slash API slash auth slash webhook. So we're going to do slash API slash auth slash webhook, right? And what I want to track are two main events. You can tweak this to your own liking. I want to track user created and I believe it's user deleted. Let me just check the functions that I have uh, data updated. Sorry, I don't think I, I allow a user to delete, but update. So I'm going to click create. And then you're going to see signing secret over here. I'm going to click that. And this is what I copy. Go to my env environment variable and paste it there. So when it comes to clerk, everything has been set up. Now, let's go back to our template. And let's see, okay, I see some super base that I need to set up. I'm just going to copy here. And I paste this here. So we're going to go to super base. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call this um, if it'll let me. OK, I'm going to call this YouTube demos and then I'm going to generate a password, random password. I'm going to copy that. And then, yeah, e East US is fine. I'm going to create a project. Now, what I'm going to do is just for my own sake, I'm going to copy and paste this database password make sure you save that password, you're going to need it. And now I get some URLs. So this service URL, notice here, it says this key has the ability to bypass row level security, never share it publicly. So I'm going to copy this. I know you might be like, why is he sharing this in front of us? I'm going to delete all this stuff. So if you try to copy the keys, whatever, have fun with it, but I'm deleting all this stuff. So I'm going to paste 
the service role secret to Superbase service key. And then I'm going to take the URL under project configuration and I'm going to paste it here. Now, the Superbase URL gives us access, is a URL that points to our instance. The Superbase service key is a key that if anyone has access to this, they can access your database without any checks. Now, you might be like, why the heck would you do that? Right? If you use, let me go back to APIs. If I use Anon Public, this key is safe to use in the browser if you ha have enabled role level security for your tables and configured policies, right? So if I use the Anon public key, this can will actually be exposed to the browser. And if anyone has access to this, it is uh, they can essentially try to gain access to my database. But if I have role level security with policies, meaning only specific people can have access to my database, I can be protected. I'll be honest, I've just seen it's it's much harder to 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 set policies if you're not uh, a G when it comes to DB. So what I do is, if you notice, I don't have next underscore public to the Superbase URL and Superbase service key. I only use these two things on the server. I don't use them on the client. So the browser does not have access to them. The browser is not exposed to these keys. So I only use these on the server, meaning. Only people who have access to my server have access to these keys, and the only people who have access to my server is me, right? So I trust me. So that's how I'm doing it. I have the Superbase URL and Superbase key. Now I need the database URL and the direct URL. Now the only reason I use, I, I still, we still need this, is so that we can write one simple command and have all our tables generated using Prisma. So we're gonna go to database. And I have some instruction here. Set this trans set this to the transaction connection pooler string you copied in step one. So after you click on database, right? This is I'll show you again. Project settings database, right? So this is the connection pooler. So I'm going to copy this. This is in transaction mode, and transaction mode is the database URL. Remember the password I told you to remember to copy. I'm going to paste that here. Boom. Right, and then we're going to switch this to session mode. Copy this, paste this here, and then copy this password over here. Boom. Right. So now our super base is set up. Now what's left is upstash Redis. I don't think we have to have this set up because I'm not going to show you um, the rate limiter. But just for simplicity's sake, let's just go upstash.com. This is what I use as a rate limiter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a database. I'm going to call this YouTube demo. Um, just select the region. And then I want the free plan. Perfect. Once I get the free plan, I'm going to go to JavaScript. No, I think where is my can't I just copy the universe? Oh, yep, right here. So I'm just going to copy this right here and then paste it. Done. All right. And then last but not least, we have our front end URL and our Stripe stuff. So for the front end URL, we're just going to use localhost 3000, right? But when you deploy your site and you uh, add your environment variables to whatever service you're deploying to, you put your actual domain. Um, and then next, we need our Stripe stuff. So we need a Stripe secret key, webhook secret, uh, and then we need a Stripe uh, public key and a Stripe price ID. So let's go to Stripe. Now, the first thing we need is a secret key. So I'm just going to type uh, API and then I'm going to click on API keys. You saw that pop up API API keys. Now, this is my publishable key. So I'm going to copy that. And I believe this is the public key. And then secret secret key. I'm just going to reveal this copy this right here. And then this is the secret key. Now, webhook secret. In order to set up my webhook secret, I'm going to go on search, type webhook, right? And I'm going to create a new endpoint. And remember the ngrok thing we set up, the URL that's exposed in the internet. We're going to copy that. We're going to, I'm going to be on the current version, right? 2023.08.16. And there's a couple events that I'm going to track. Now, the way I'm going to find which events to track is I'm going to go to my code base. I'm going to click on app 
and then I'm going to go to API and then I'm going to go to payments and webhook. So it's API slash payments slash webhook. So we're going to copy our URL. So I paste that URL at the next step. So what I need to do is I need to give them the events I'm going to track to find the events I'm going to track. I'm just going to go to the webhook folder, click route TS, and then you're going to have to scroll down and you see these right here, these this switch statement with the different cases. Basically, what a switch statement is, is it's telling you check every case. And if the case matches, fire off this function. So we're going to do customer subscription created, customer subscription updated, customer subscription deleted. So let's copy this. Paste it here. We're going to do created, deleted, and then updated. Right. So we're selected those. Great. We have these three selected. And then we're going to do invoice payment succeeded and invoice payment failed. So I'm just going to copy invoice. And then we're going to do payment succeeded and payment failed, right? And then last last but not least, we're going to do checkout session completed, right? We're just going to copy paste that. Boom. So I have all the events I want to track. So when someone makes a payment on Stripe, the, the, the event information that I want to track is as follows. There's plenty more you can track completely up to you. Click continue. Now this is where I get the endpoint URL. This is where I paste the endpoint URL. So I'm going to copy this URL again. Paste this here. I'm going to do slash API slash payments slash webhook. Right. And I'm going to say YouTube demo. All right. We've created our webhook. Perfect. Now we're going to see signing secret. I'm going to click reveal. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go to my dot m dot local. And this is where I paste my Stripe secret. Now, the one thing that's left, the final thing that's left is next public Stripe price ID. Now, you're probably going to have multiple of these if you're going to have a, a subscript like multiple subscriptions. I'm just going to have one. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to show you how to do one and you can create multiple from this. You're going to go to product catalog, right? And you're going to click add product and we're going to say YouTube demo special, right? Uh, newest and hottest product or oh, hottest product. All right. And this is going to be 10 US dollars monthly add tax. And we're just going to add product. Okay. So the product has been added, right? And now what I'm going to do is the, let me just double check the price ID. So I click here. And there should be an ID for me, a new price. Is that it? Wait. Oh, right here. So this is the price ID that I want. So the way you get the price ID just to show you is once you've created your product, click on the specific subscription and then copy this right here. So I have all my environment variables set up, which is perfect. This is a big step one. Congratulations. You have done well now. On to the next step, what we're going to do is we are going to config, we are going to set up our database, right? So we're going to go to Superbase, we're going to go on table editor and notice there aren't any tables. But if I go to my code base and we're going to close this right here, and if I go to Prisma and I go to schema.prisma, this is a schema for our database. This is uh, what our database tables will look like. This basically says connect to this database. Remember database URL and uh, database URL and direct URL connect to this database and create these different tables, right? And noted by model. So you have a user table, a payments table, subscription table, subscriptions, plans and invoices. Now you, you can manually create this tables by creating new table, entering all the IDs and stuff like that. But what we can do is I'm going to pull up this doc right here and I'll link this in the description below. What we can do is we're going to use Prisma to create all our tables for us. All right, we're going to do Pris NPX Prisma migrate dev. Okay, so it says environment variable not found. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to rename this dot env dot local to just dot env. All right, we're going to clear this and then we're going to run this command again. 
and okay yeah, i just couldn't find the dot env dot local so if just change it to dot env we can keep it at dot env enter new migration i'll just say table and okay the migration has been done so if i go to superbase right notice all my tables are finally made so i have my user table my subscription plans table uh, superbase being really really slow subscriptions table payments invoice prisma migrations right this is perfect so what i'm going to do is for each table i'm going to enable role level security right so i'm going to enable role level security for user and then I'm going to go each table and doing this. And the reason why I'm doing this, like I explained earlier, when role level security is enabled, it basically there needs you need to set a policy to state who can have access to your table. No one can access your table unless a certain criteria is met. But what I'm doing is I'm creating role level. I'm enabling role level security, but adding no policies, meaning no one can have access to my table unless they have that super secret key I was telling you about. And the only person that has access to that key is my server. And the only person that has access to my server is my super secret key. The reason why you need role level security and policies really is if you're using um, the keys that can be exposed to the browser because anyone can inspect uh, open the inspect tab and get that uh, key and try to brute force your uh, your database use that key to try to mess with your tables but if you have good policies you can offset that but writing good policies is difficult so this is what I do instead so my database is fully set up now let's go back to clerk and we also have our webhook set up for clerk and for Stripe, we have our product set up for Stripe. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a live test. And here's the thing. It's probably going to break, but in breaking, we're going to figure out how to fix it. And you're going to learn a lot. So I have my application server back on refreshing my local host 3000, my internet, for some reason, the day I want to record this, my internet is acting up, but we'll make do. We have local host 3000. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to scroll down. I see the pricing page here. I'm going to click on get started. It won't let me go until I sign up. So I'm going to click sign up and we're going to click on um, continue with Google. I'm going to sign in with my Google account. I'm signed in. You can see this user uh, button pop up. Now I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click on get started. Now, all of these will be the same thing because I just use one price ID. This is for an example sake. I'll show you in the code where you can change this. So I click get started. Now I'm on a Stripe checkout page. Remember the $10 product I set. So I'm going to use the same email again. This is a test account. So the test account credit card for Stripe is 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42. So 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42. I don't think any other number works. So just make stuff up. Uh, I'm going to have my name. Definitely have some covering up to do here. 42, 42, 42. And then we're going to hit subscribe. But before we do, let's go back to our super base table and let's go to our user table. Notice how on our user table, something just populated my email, my first and last name, my profile image and my user ID, right? So our our uh, app to clerk to Superbase database, the connection worked. So now let's see if on first try we're going to get payments to work. So let me go back to where's my local host uh, right here and let's click subscribe. All right, it completed and then it's going to forward me to a success page. It says, welcome to the next year starter kick. Let's get cooking. I click on access dashboard, right? And I have access to the paid uh, dashboard. Now let's go to our uh, database. Let's go to invoices. Let's hit refresh and invoice for some reason didn't work. And let's go subscription. Oh, subscription showed up. Okay, subscription showed up. We see that we have an active subscription, right? Um, this is the plan ID. This is the email of the user. And this is the user ID, which matches me right here. Now, when we go to invoices, for some reason, the invoices didn't pop up. So let's go to the code and diagnose. So there's an error here that's commented saying fail, uh, failing row contains this. This is null value column amount due of relation violates not null constraint. OK, so basically the reason why the invoice wasn't inserted is because on my invoices column, 
amount due was made to not be allowed nullable. So I'm just going to allow nullable here. And then what I'm going to do is on the starter kit, I'm going to make amount due. When I add the question mark, it makes it so that um, someone uh, actually let's double check. What does the question mark do? I know it just means that it can be null. Oh, it's optional. How about nullable? Yeah, so you would do optional. All right, perfect. Just wanted to double check. All right, so I made it optional. I would now in this case, you can run NPX Prisma uh, that command, but I just made the change here. Um, and obviously, because this um, user signed in and I made a subscription, um, I want to be able to check that the invoices work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to start kit. I'm going to log out, right? And now I'm going to sign in again with a different account. So let me go to the site. It's going to tell me sign up. OK, cool. I'm going to sign in with a different Google account. So I'm going to sign in with this email. And now let's check my. OK, perfect. See, my first name, email, user ID is there. But notice I have no subscription and Michael, my first email has a subscription. So what we're going to do is we're going to test out subscriptions now. So we're going to scroll down, click on get started here. We're going to enter the same email. Make sure the emails match. The emails have to match 42, 42, 42, 42. And then just random. I'm going to do my last name just so we can see a distinguishable thing. And 42, 42, 42 subscribe and the payments went through success if i click on access dashboard beautiful I have access to the dashboard now let's go on our database notice a subscription id is shown when we go to the subscriptions table we see that let's go back here we see that m list has an active subscription and if we click on invoices, the invoice is there. So this invoice shows that $10 was paid. Now, what happens if I cancel my subscription, right? So we're going to go to the subscriptions on uh, Stripe and I'm going to mimic uh, someone canceling their subscription. So what I'm going to do is M 96. That's the one I signed up with. I'm just going to cancel flat out, cancel subscription. And if we go to our DB, Invoice is still there because it was paid. If we go to subscription, it has been changed to canceled now. And when we go to the user, the user subscription has been removed. So with the same account, now that my subscription is canceled, what happens if I, I'm on the dashboard page and I hit a refresh, I lose access. So ladies and gentlemen, that is setting up the Next.js starter kit. So you now have a fully set up and you have payments, you have a database integration, you have rate limiting, right? You have this beautiful landing page, you have chat CN components, you have a pre-built dashboard, right? You have a marketing page with a custom video player. I built my own video player. So there's a lot of great things you have here. This is the Next.js starter kit. Now this video has already got a little bit too long. So in terms of how the Next.js starter kit works and all the code and how I structured and all that stuff, that will be my very next video. Let me know in the comments below if that's a video you want to see, but this is how you get fully set up with my Next.js starter kit. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for all the love and support. I hope you enjoy the starter kit and I hope you cook. See you in the next video. Peace.